whether it be in Johannesburg, you're welcome. So we, we love that. Okay. So with that said, as we wait for people to come in, uh, we are excited that through our research uh, in Johannesburg, we've really gone into a stage of understanding that there are different nodes of, of recycle centers, of separation of waste, collection centers that are turning into to greater nodes for the community to enrich and understand the resource capability, or at least that resources have value. And this response as a South African has come from what we used to in responding to, I think, an environment that ultimately seems disruptive, and it's a word that we've used in society. Post-COVID-19, our response systems, and ultimately, I think, the governance of bringing in policy that will enable uh, perhaps more food security, more growth in communities to create employment is truly where we fit in ultimately as business leaders, as um, you know, community organizations, as SMEs, as dreamers, as visionaries of South Africa and how we can provide a solution to the problems that are persistent, not only in our country, but in urban areas spreading through to to the development that is so necessary in our rural community as well. So welcome to the Johannesburg South Africa uh, webinar where we focused on innovation through your waste resources and of course responsible waste collection and ultimately uh, driving the principles of what a circular economy means and ultimately at its basic premise a circular economy is about bringing things back into a system instead of taking, making, using, and resourcing. So I'm delighted to, to welcome you all. Um, do know that uh, we represent great territory in uh, South Africa this morning. Absolutely thrilled that we have representation in uh, Kuruleni in Boxburg. We've got representation in Deep Sluit, and we have representation in the Western Cape. As much as uh, we're excited if you, you know if you are a member to the Circuit Economy Network, uh, brought to you by Waste State, sponsored by Hutamaki. You know that we are about collaboration, strengthening, a scaling up developments with impact. Um, as we've launched the Zero Waste Cities Challenge, so welcome to it. At any stage, I'm going to introduce the panelists now. But I would like to bring in my team member. Uh, he has just joined Waste Waste State. In fact, it's his second week with us, Tabo Sanai, and. Uh, Tabo has phenomenal uh, vision and has worked very extensively on the ground and through different value chains with regard to entrenching uh, what we call, you know, enterprise development. And hopefully in South Africa, the social enterprise of that will go on to, to map this land and bring in nodes and connect the dots that we can really mm. find solutions to our waste and more importantly, solutions to poverty uh, health and ultimately community. Uh, Tabo, it's so good to have you on board. Welcome. Thank you, Angela. Colleagues and all our panelists, a very good morning to you all. On behalf of West Aid and our sponsor, Humataki, it's a great privilege for me to welcome you to this webinar. This webinar seeks to showcase and to learn from three of our local entrepreneurs who are doing amazing things in the secular economy space. At West Aid, we work with policymakers, entrepreneurs, and communities to implement sustainable waste management solutions. We currently have a range of projects operational in Cameroon, the Gambia, and Kenya. And we've recently launched three circular economy networks in Vietnam, India, and South Africa. In South Africa, particularly, we act as a catalyst to promote circular economy approaches to waste management recycling, reuse, repair, and remanufacturing to advance economic development, poverty alleviation, and sustainability. Having recently joined WestAid as the program manager for South Africa and to oversee the rollout of this program, I really look forward to meeting each and every one of you in person or virtually to learn from you, as well as to discuss how best we can work together to advance the circular economy in South Africa. I'd like to um, bring, bring to your attention that we also have a poll that we are running and would very much appreciate you taking a minute or two to participate in it. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. 
I wish you all the best and looking forward um, to learning from you. Uh, thank you so much. Welcome to you, Angela. Thank you so much, Tabo. Also joining us from Waystead, uh, all the way from the United Kingdom, we have uh, Jane and Nat. They're part of the digital communications team. And in strength, we're going to bring you into the conversation representation. As you will see, I think first and foremost, as Tabo said, the circular economy knowledge um, in South Africa, we're trying to track that, we're connecting and trying to understand what it means. And the poll indicates, is the circular economy a familiar concept to you? All right, and you can see there's either, yes, I know all about the three key pillars of the circular economy, or no, I don't understand how it's different to recycling, and no, or rather the third option being, no, I have not heard about it before. Thank you for your participation. So with that said, we get into the process and welcome our wonderful um, participants who are active on the ground, who have been through the challenges as a South African, who have really done the work and now hoping to scale up so that we can all see the impact um, in South Africa at a ground root level. So ultimately, um, our first speaker this morning, uh, you would have perhaps seen uh, their work not only on at Cirque Econ Network, that's on Twitter and LinkedIn, but ultimately in Johannesburg, South Africa, at the end of March, we put a circular economy network together where we brought partners in to have conversation at the beginning of separation of source. Uh, Nondomiso Sibia is the COO of Boomback.mobi in Dipslutz, Johannesburg, Gauteng. I've been on site and I'll tell you, <laughs> the fact that they're in a community and that the community is paying attention is something we need to talk about. So as a waste management business platform, um, they really are looking at increasing the recovery and reuse of the whole range of the waste system, working in bringing in the community. They're also considering the con construction waste of which obviously is an important sector in our country as hopefully there's a booming growth in the near future, as well as waste to waste and, and, and from pitches from commercial homes um, to its commercial rates. Our second peak speaker this morning is Loretta Vartaboo. And now she's the founder of LW Recycling and Trade in Fisantekral, I believe it is, all the way in the Western Cape. And Loretta started her projects in trade in 2014, operating out of her backyard, as many South Africans do at the moment, where she collected small quantities of any recyclable material she could find. So ultimately including, of course, your, your PET plastic bottles. Plastics is a, a focus we need to go into. With no equipment at all to assist her, she basically made do with what she could, working full time, right, as a South African. And despite the challenges, she truly, three years later, uh, Garden Cities approached her to do a recycling project from her site's yard and entered into the enterprise development agreement with her. She also is a Petco Awards winner for the top woman in collection and recycling for 2021. And we love the fact that we have you on board as well. Another Petco Award winner for, um, as a petropreneur, all the way from Boxburg, Gauteng, is Manning Kozi, Kozi. He's the founder of Man Recycling. Ultimately also in 2017, as a response, of being unemployed and having to look after your family monthly because he started earning a living by understanding the value and collecting recyclable material to sell. So um, a couple of years, a couple of operations from an open field is where he started collecting three tons of PT plastic bottles a month. And of course the convergence of waste is so critical for us to upstream that value system. The Man Recycling Buyback Center was born and operates from a secure building right now and collects over 18 tons of PT a month and employs 30 community members. So to this growth, uh, I'm gonna lead in and hand over to our panelists to bring into conversation. But remember at any stage, if there are questions you wanna to ask to either of our panelists, or if you're just curious, please do share um, on the chat function and we'll share that just after our session with the three panelists. So I'm going to hand over to Norm Dumiso. Norm Dumiso, very quickly tell us about your business and ultimately how you got started in responsible waste collection. Norm Dumiso. So uh, Norm Dumiso, um, Zubaya, I don't know if you can hear me, Norm Dumiso. 
All right, Manlinkozi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, ma'am. All right, Manlinkozi, Loretta, I've just skipped it. Manlinkozi, I'm going to get you to start off. We're going to reconnect with Nondumi. So, uh, Manlinkozi, if you would just get us. I mean, I've given a big brief idea, but I know that you've scaled up and there's a lot happening. Tell us about Man Recycling. Good morning, South Africa. Good morning, the world. I understand that uh, uh, all over the world uh, we are connected. Thank you very much for having me, Angela, and uh, Waste, Waste Aid. My name is Mantle Nkosi Nkosi. Um, as you have mentioned, uh, Angela, I started without any knowledge of recycling. I could see people going out, um, pulling trolleys, but coming back, you know, having themselves some small packages of groceries. And uh, I was jobless at the time. And uh, unfortunately, I had no career, I had no academic qualification. I had no education to, be, to fall back onto. And uh, I had a family to look after. And uh, my wife was still expecting the, our firstborn. And uh, I had to make a plan. I went out. I was, at that time, when you were seeing a person pulling a trolley or towing a trolley, there was a stigma attached to that person that you are a failure of some sort. If you tow a trolley, you open a dustbin. So there was this stigma as you look, you were looked down upon. And uh, I would actually travel a long distance to actually avoid the people that knows me from my location and go to another different town to come go and do the recycling. And eventually it grew and grew and I actually went to the right direction because I went to Eguruleni. The municipality in Eguruleni started recognizing my efforts and they started giving me the transfer station where the communities bring their waste. And that's when actually I began to grow because the municipality gave me all the necessary support. Um, Angela, to what it is today, it is because the municipality played a bigger role as the government and the community, especially um, the, 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 the small businesses in town. They started giving me and knowing me that I'm doing recycling. And then they started giving packaging the boxes for me, they'll start packing all the plastics for me, not mix it with rubbish, so that it will make it easy. And some, especially white fellows that are more advanced and having this knowledge, they will even give me the food that is still not damaged, but they don't need it. They will give it to me, then I'll carry it to my family as if I, I bought it, and very expensive food, they will give it to me. Mother, take this and take home to your family. And uh, South Africa has got very, very good community and good people. I want to thank everybody in South Africa for supporting me to what I am today. Like you said, um, Angela, I, I started in Boxburg, but uh, I, I originally come from the Eastern Cape. Uh, in the Eastern Cape, I come from where Nelson Mandela, our father, was born in the Bashi municipality. And uh, my passion, each and every time when I go home, I could see there is no recycling activity. And it's along the coast, You, to my surprise, tourists pass there. Uh, you, as you know, tourists come from Houghton all over. And when they come, they also don't do recycling. They use whatever they use and then toss it. And you could see on the streets, on the gravel roads towards the ocean, that there's a lot of material that I can get for free there. But the challenge is there are no factories nearby where you can take the stuff and go and sell it to. So I started a new bathroom center in, in the Eastern Cape, right in Mbasha municipality where Nelson Mandela comes from. I'm cleaning the city, even though I'm still struggling to find haulage to bring it here in Houghton. But I'm doing it. I'm making it. And the, the municipality, they are so supportive, they like me. And uh, I want to say thank you very much, South Africa. That's, that's my Linkosi Nkosi, Man Recycling. Man Linkosi Nkosi, Man Recycling, wonderful. We're going to come back to you and tap into those challenges and the insights. Non do me so, uh, our boom bat dot movie. Boom bat. <laughs> Not Moby, welcome. Uh, Nor the music, could you turn on your mic and do tell us about how you got started? Because I think what you're doing is remarkable as every single business um, and about a bit of the community buying in Dipsu. 
Hi everyone, thank you, Angela. Uh, my name is known to Mrs. B as Angela has said. Um, so Pumbutut Mobi was initially founded as a waste management business platform. Um, we, we live in a community in Dipslot where we experience a lot of waste being irresponsibly disposed of on the side of the streams, on the side of the road, um, in parks where kids play. So we saw that there's a problem um, in, terms of the, in terms of the coordination, like drivers don't know where to dump their way. So we then came up with um, a platform, which is just actually just connecting customers. Um, so our business actually just manages customers. Um, we send, um, we connect customers with um, truck operators and then facilitate the process of um, the customer's waste being responsibly disposed of. So here today, I am representing mostly the new version of our company in which now we have, um, through the interaction with customers, we have realized that they mostly send green waste um, to the to the community, like they mostly ask us to come and collect uh, green waste, which is where we then start to do composting. But um, in essence, our community is um, is in the north of Johannesburg. We have a population of around half a, I mean, uh, it's 800,000 um, people living in Dipsut. It's over half a million. Um, so there is a lot of waste in our community and we have seen a need to actually intervene because we have noticed that even the, 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 the agent that has been um, appointed by the city is not managing. So as an entrepreneur, we saw an opportunity to come in and to say, hey, let us help the community by making sure that the waste that comes from our customers does not end up being irresponsibly disposed of, but it ends up being um, distributed and helped and helping the people within the community to actually benefit. For example, um, with garden waste, we would normally send it to um, local farmers for composting um, but now we also do composting and then uh, help people with the compost that we get or exchange um, or exchange wood um, especially now that it is winter people like to um, make fire so they come and take firewood from us and then they bring us the type of waste which is mostly food waste um, which we require to actually um, help us with the processing using um, earthworms so yeah that is what our company does i will actually dive more into detail into the into how we do composting because we use insects and then we use a process called heat composting um, to get the process going and to actually take out value out of what people would call waste in terms of food waste. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Nondumiso. And essentially, in a South African sense, we have demonstrated and, and shown you the information how critical it is for every household for all of us to consider separation of source and start with your natural organic waste because over 30% goes straight to landfill. So another way of looking at the circular economy is about landfill avoidance, okay? So from organic separation in business and connecting the nodes and community developments, we now go over all the way, we love the representation of South Africa to the Western Cape, right? And we have Loretta with us from Hisandekral. Loretta, put on your mic. And you tell us about how you got started. And I know that you work with a lot of women. And what is wonderful is not only South Africa, but the globe is looking at the Millennium Development Goals. Uh, of course, your standard goals of bringing in women in uh, to community, but also then empowering them. Loretta, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Angela, Tabo, Inet, and all the panelists that are listening this morning. Um, I believe that there are a lot of people listening in today as far as overseas, uh, like Kenya, African countries, and so forth. And I uh, think the South African people that's also listening in today, especially um, <laughs> my supporters, I thank you all. My name is Loretta Waterboer. I'm currently from the Northern Cape, but I've been here in Cape Town now for 28 years. Um, I started my recycling business in 2014. This dream came along as I attended a workshop in Cryfontaine um, by Petco 
So um, Cara Levi, she was the one of the hosts there and uh, she handed out some uh, pamphlets on how to, to start your own recycling business. Um, yes, and uh, I just took it and I, when I got home, I decided to read, over, to read over it. And then I said, this is what I want to do. But at that time, I was a domestic worker. I worked um, three days for different people that time. It's been very hard for me. And uh, that particular morning before the workshop, I went to the library to see if I could um, get more um, work opportunities from newspapers and so forth. As I were a security officer or before then also years back, and uh, I would love to have a full time job by then. So um, Wesley just I saw the bus standing there and Wesley came up to me and asked me. All right, I think with the internet connection, let's see if Loretta reconnects. Um, there's an important story in every single sector. Uh, while we wait for Loretta, I'm going to just uh, move on and then come back to you. Mandling Kozi, I welcome you back into the conversation again. Um, before I engage with you quickly, I just want to remind everyone, thank you. I see the comments coming through um, on chat. If you have any questions, please place them in the Q&A section at the bottom part of your screen, and we're going to engage with you in the next uh, uh, 10 minutes or so and bring you into the conversation. Loretta, I'm going to um, reconnect with you in a bit. Uh, Manding Kosi, if you could uh, quickly tell us about the challenges, insights, definitely insights. And of course, you've touched on the successes in, um, as a, uh, in your journey as a new traffic. Thank you, Angela. Uh, once more, um, there are quite a number of challenges, but nothing much as such. Recycling, starting a recycling business, especially when you pick up the stuff like, uh, for instance, the domestic waste, the, the, your, 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 your PET, your beverage containers. Um, this, this is the only business that you can start without a capital. Recycling, you start from zero. It's a matter of going out and starting. So there are not much challenges, but the challenges remains in the mind. If you can correct, once you draw a line and start focusing on what exactly that do you need as an unemployed man like me, having a responsibility to bring bread on the table, you will think of what is it that you do? You need to sacrifice your, your image, your, your pride, and go and open a dustbin. So you need to just channel your mind. That is the only challenge. What I've, I've, I've learned so far is that once you pass that stage, of, of, of the stigma uh, and, and the, the, the pride that you want to carry when you think opening a dustbin in public and sifting stuff in, in front of everybody, especially in the taxi ranks, in the malls, with the people that know you, 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 you have passed. Once you pass that stage, you have passed. The second stage you, is the challenge is that how do you save? You need to make a plan to save so that you grow. Many of us, I would say, people without any much knowledge and education like me, uh, I, I, we struggled a lot with how to save. But uh, eventually got with my, on my side, I managed to save. And the first vehicle I got, I got from a white guy that was from Blackburn, an old guy that had too many vehicles in his yard and told me, he used to see me towing a trolley every day. He could see me every time when he goes to the dump inside and see me there. Manda, I've got a vehicle that is staying at home. I can assist you. So there are people who are willing to assist. It's just that once you tell yourself that this thing, I want to do it, you'll see the environment, you'll see the people coming forward with the kind of help that you basically need. So for me, for now, it's, what I've learned is that the challenges are within the mindset of a collector, and a consumer because the one that throws or tosses the waste on the street uh, angela it could be somebody educated but doesn't want to sit with the waste inside his vehicle so he will toss it out but look down upon the person who will come and pick it up 
from um, the, from the street. So both consumer or, or, or communities and waste pickers, we need to uh, adjust our minds. I think the challenge is there basically, uh, Angela and, and, and the panelists, I, I, I've seen that. It's not about the cash. It's not about the facilities and the equipment that comes after. Though in my case, I had a challenge because I, I didn't want to sell every day. I wanted to grow my stuff, to pile it, sort it. When I sell, I sell maybe once a week so that I get a little bit of a lump sum. So I see people selling every day. It's okay because they're running out of storage. They don't have storage. to. to so so I, I had a lot of challenges when I took my stuff, piled it for a week, and on a third, open third, um, the land I was not given by the municipality. The municipality in the Gurren had no land for, for, for waste pickers or for, for recyclers. Till, until I was assisted by a building that was abandoned by Transnet. And eventually, I knocked at Transnet door. They eventually gave me the, the, the building that I'm using now. And they're giving it to me for free. And uh, that's what makes me grow because I'm not paying rent on that particular building. So it at least gives me because the profit margin in the recycling sector, it's so little. So it makes me to actually save the money for other stuff like the hikers and other equipment and pay my, my stuff. But in general, um, Angela, I think what is the main challenge is the mindset to talk about this, to discuss about this, make everybody aware of recycling activity, how important it is, how is important, how important is the person who is putting a trolley to give him space to respect him while of what he's doing on the road. When you see that person, don't don't press your, 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 your bell in your vehicle. Be patient with that person because he's doing a very much important job. So it's just to understand and work hand in hand with the consumer and the waste pickers. That's basically where the challenges are. Otherwise, Petco has come up with a very good solution, they will come with assistance. Once they see you are actually contributing significantly uh, in improving the environment, they will come and help. The government will come and assist you. The, the private sector will also come in. I have seen that. There is no excuse to say there is no help, there is no money. Recycling is for everybody. You can be affected by COVID-19, laying at home. I think you're wasting your time. Come and join us and uh, we'll show you the way because there's too much waste in South Africa. Thank you, Angela. Thank you so much, Mandela. You, you, you've, you've put in context a critical um, focus area for every single South African from the waste picker consideration and how we connect and truly bring in an inclusive, inclusivity, I think for ultimately every single waste picker and how we can bridge the gap by the understanding, the respect um, and possibly the, the ease of collection and then what you mentioned as well, the convergence of waste. The greater the waste we can assimilate together, the greater profit margins and the greater effect uh, for communities in bringing this all together. We have connected with um, Mr. Luyanda Klachwayo um, from the African Reclaimers Organization. And unfortunately on the morning of our event, he could not join us because he was attending to two waste pickers who would not buy cars. Um, with their trolleys. So ultimately, um, we need to look into different models that can really have a look in assisting and bringing um, waste pickers and collection centers and buyback centers into a benefit for everyone. I'm going to now, have, thank you, Manda. We're going to come back to you. There's a question of you coming through to you. I just want to note that if you are uh, having problems uh, sharing any questions within the Q&A function, I see some have come through. Please ultimately place them in the chat as well. Uh, we have many people coming in all the way from Klazi and Durban as well. But right now, um, as I go through the messages, I'm gonna hand over to Nondomi. So uh, you know the value of community and you know the buy-in that is needed from community. So I'm gonna ask you about your challenges, your insights, and of course, the wins, the success, and where you, you look to the future of bringing in that community equity. Thank you, Angela. So as a, as a small enterprise within a community, um, mo mostly because 
We as Mobi normally operate in an affluent area whereby we collect waste from their side. Um, that is because business needs to bring an income and those people are the ones who are able to pay for the truck to come and collect the waste. So coming into the space where we are currently composting, the challenge that we have faced um, for now, it's actually getting a buy-in from the community. Um, and we are working on that. Hence, I have said that we are working on strategies on um, how we can actually Butter, open a buttering system that we have seen work um, in an amazing way within our community, whereby we actually take eco bricks and then put like take two liter bottles, put plastics inside, take them to this shop and they give you clothes with it. So we are looking forward to collaborating with them. Um, it's a matter of now saying, okay, fine, there's no problem in collaborating, but can we have the facility where we can then store certain clothes or items that people when they bring their waste for us to compost and resell they can then get um, maybe a jersey because it's cold now or even a sweetie if it's a, a, a sweet um, for a young one you know so uh, mostly it's actually just um, getting access to the market as well because people already has a piece of a pie and you need to also refine who is it exactly that you are looking for because you cannot blanket all people and say all people are looking for compost um, and all people will come and give me um, waste that they produce in their homes so it's made it's also making an awareness that has been our challenge um in the in the space of um in both areas as well, the waste management is in collecting waste from affluent areas and in collecting food waste within our township. The most challenging uh, part was is actually the transportation cost, the logistics, uh, because we are currently not having a truck. So that has been the most thing that has held us back um, as, um, an as entrepreneurs. We've been operational now for two years um, fully, but we are not great. We are not giving up, um, and we are continually finding alternative ways of, um, uh, like, um, getting other revenue streams so that we can then save up money and then get that truck. Even when sometimes when we knock. You know, sometimes you have to knock at 100 doors, even if um, door number 101 is the one that is going to open, we continue to knock. Um, one of the other challenges, um, it's mostly just understanding the cycle. Um, in the affluent area, we are way, we are operating very well and we are having, one of our successes is that um, we have repeat businesses, we have repeat business from our customers. So that's one of the things that one can say, then we are giving a good service. If someone calls us continually to say, come and take my waste, it means we are serving them, um, we are saving them successfully and they're happy with our service. So right now the other thing has been how then do we get into the township and say hey can i save you because um in in 2019 before the lockdown i went out through a project of bumba Mobi and i was collecting waste within the community like um, a waste reclaimer because I had asked myself that why are these people putting like us in the household are putting a waste in the dustbin I was like why are we not taking it out and separating it just like probably in the suburbs they do so I was like okay please put it aside for me telling the people within the households and I will come and collect so I would do that but I noticed after a period of time it could be after a month or after a two, or after two months people would look at me and they'll be like can I have a cold drink can I have something because I gave you this you know and then you would look at the margin how much did I make from the waste that I collected from you you know it's not um, that I get much profit so then that's when we figured the cycle that no these people they actually want to be incentivized they don't it, they are not they are not thinking the same way as people in the affluent areas where they are willing to pay for the service that one provides they rather want to actually exchange um, they want to say I am doing you a favor because they hardly pay for any service that is provided for them for example um, waste management the, the waste the, the waste that is being collected from them is for free water is for free yes they pay for electricity some of them they pay for electricity so it's not something that they are familiar with when you come and collect their waste for free not even mm -hmm. asking them to charge they say can you give me something so that's when we are looking into how can we then interact with this type of people and be successful because 
I'm telling you, if we can conquer this challenge of accessing um, this um, type of market, 800,000 people within mm -hmm. our community, mm -hmm. there is a lot of waste. We'll be billionaires, no question with that. It's just a matter of saying, which one is the right key for us to just unlock and then we get all the resources that we need. So that has been the challenges. In terms of successes, um, mm -hmm. we, in 2019, actually, which has been the great um, motivator, we received as Pumba.mobi, uh, mm -hmm. Fair Lady Santam uh, Woman of the Future Rising Star Award. Um, that's what we received in 2019. That was essentially saying that our business, the way that it is um, put and structured, it has a potential to outlast our life, to outlive our life. You know, we can leave it to the future generation. So that has been our success. And actually, as I said, repeat, repeating, uh, business from our customers, it's one of the greatest successes because then we know that we continually get money from them while giving them the best service. So yeah, that's what I can say. Thank you, Don Demiso. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, ultimately, indeed, I mean, you're considering human behavior. Um, and as a whole, we need to look at how we can have more involvement from all sectors. Very interesting points on that. I'm gonna quickly hand over to Loretta. Um, Loretta, I think this question and then start bringing in the questions. Thank you from Nadia. She says, Nadia says she's researching how circular economy is helping to close the gender gap. And she'd like to ask the entrepreneurs as well, and Loretta maybe can speak to this because I know that you've been busy with a lot of women as well uh, in your recycling business of how the circular economy and the understanding that recycling being part of that because it's avoiding landfill has helped you to achieve uh, gender equality or helped in your business. Loretta, welcome. Okay, Loretta was with that with us, but she's not with us at the moment. I see all the questions and answers coming through. When Loretta appears again, I'll bring it into engagement. I think let's quickly go into sharing questions. We've got amazing representation from from different uh, brands in South Africa, Tiger Brands. We've got, of course, uh, representation from all the businesses in the circular economy. From Daniel Cornier, Mandla, this one to you, says, Mandla, how did you build your relationship with the municipality? And I think ultimately, Nondumiso and Boomba has done the same thing. It's quite, quite a route. How did the journey start? And very briefly tell us, Mandla, how um, your experience in the Western Cape has been um, do you have accreditation on how really are, have you helped this system? How's the municipality rather helped you? Thank you, Angela. Thank you for asking that question. I've, I, I missed the name of the person who asked the question, but um, it's a matter of an attitude. It starts with an attitude. You have a good attitude, a positive attitude with faith. You will knock at each and every door, the door will open. Your eyes, when you travel about, you see an opportunity. Like the, the, the impartial municipality, um, I would say I, I, it's my home municipality. I go there each and every Christmas, each and every December, I go home. I see, and it's a tourist day. People there, they live out of tourism because the people, they go past by on N2, going towards East London, or either going next to next to our our game reserve in 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 the region, those people are tourists, and the communities are along those lines. They benefit mostly through the the tourism sector. So now, whenever I pass, I could see there is an opportunity there. There is waste all over, and I ask. There are no people who are doing recycling. Then I had to start thinking, let me go to the municipality. Let me go and see the municipal manager first and find out what is the activity around recycling. What is happening? I go to the municipal manager. The municipal manager told me, Michael, there is absolutely no activity. There is a one company that comes from uh, Umtata that comes and cleans up here, but it buys from the people that are sitting in the in the landfill site. So we need people that will actually be a shared municipality, a partner with the municipality that will go and assist, pick up the waste right at at, at source. If the 
the, the, the big shops, the big um, 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 retail shops, they produce a lot of waste in those areas, especially in Mumbashi municipality. They produce a lot of waste. And you go there and assist the municipality to pick up that waste at source. And it, that will actually improve our tourism because the city will be clean and tourists will be happy to stay by and eat Dujua and go and buy some drinks because the city is clean. If it's dirty and uh, the tourists will pass by and go to Nelson Mandela Bay down down there where it's much better. So if I keep my place clean, the tourists will drop. Whenever you pass on it, it, it to John, think of Mandela, you drop, you, you go down there, you buy two or two, three beverages, think of Nelson Mandela and Manda. They and then we are cleaning the city for all the tourists and the communities. And secondly, we are educating the the communities there around it because it's a rural in the Eastern Cape is it's ninety percent rural. So there is no recycling activity in the rural. We are actually initiating in partnership with PECO with the Bashi municipality and idea came up with these innovative ideas and as well including all these hotels and BNPs along the coast that how how can we clean keep this area clean? So we are busy working on a plan and we need the private sector to come and help us because we want to create job opportunities for those communities, especially in the rural areas. So they don't come in Houghton and look for gold. They stay there because they, you know, the waste, we turn the waste to our heart in the Eastern Cape. So because tourists say they come. My love, let me stop you there because I feel the passion. I just want to get in some more questions because what you have to say has such value. And I've got another question for you. I'm going to quickly okay. go to Ondo Miso and then ask you to come back on this one from Sina Temba uh, has asked Mandla, uh, what your capacity, your capacity output is at the moment, right? And how you have partnered with stakeholders to ensure that you recyclate cells. So obviously in urban centers in Boxburg, um, you can bring us into that picture um, in, in a few moments, but not to me, so I'm going to quickly go back to you. Um, and My apologies there, I say I was uh, muted. Firstly, thank you, Mandela. I'm going to come back to you. There's another question for you. I'd just like to express that, unfortunately, Loretta has disconnected with us. Um, I will recalibrate the conversation with Loretta and we'll share it on uh, the Circular Economy Network's communications and do a personal interview with her. But Mandela, um, I'm going to quickly go to Nondonisa, but one of the questions that I'm going to come back to you for was that, um, the capacity of your output, right? Sina Tambas asked, what is your capacity of your output and how you've partnered with stakeholders to ensure that your recycled cells. Um, that obviously different from the rural areas. Nondo Miso, I'd like you just to, to firstly bring into conversation, um, ultimately, how you think the private sector, how you think businesses and the capacity of training through your extended producer responsibility agents um, with the new law in South Africa at the moment can strengthen little businesses on the side or SMEs or these nodes of separation um, irrespective of how your business plays into the three principles of circular economy. Thank you, Angela. Um, so I think that actually corporates have a very huge role to play, especially those that actually are impacted by the very problem of um, waste not being responsibly disposed of. We talk about the tourist companies and the likes, but I think, for example, uh, Hutamaki who says, guys, how can we then solve the problem of this waste being um, not being uh, properly disposed of? It, it actually brings forth the 
ability or the resources when the when the when the entrepreneur is appointed to do so that they say i do have these ideas i know that this thing will work but you empower me with um either facilities such as maybe transportation or whatever it is that they can offer or even funds to say we are empowering the young, the people who are incapable of doing much because of the limitation that they have. They break the barrier of the limitation and they say, "Let I will let you fly. And then because as you fly, you help me become better. I mean, you know, this um, image, people now, every time you see Coke on the, I mean, we do cleanups, you know, when you see a certain bottle, you take a picture and you say, what is it that you're doing with this? Uh, brand and everything so the likes of these people who are already in the in the business when they say look as an entrepreneur as an entrepreneur um i am empowering you to go and make a difference and then um then they put their brand to say we are empowering this young one it it, it really makes a change in our economy and it helps um make uh extra jobs for other people who would otherwise not have an opportunity. So it's more like the person who's high there, pulling the one that is down there and saying, hey, let's work and uh, be together, helping each other to be better. Thank you, Nondemi. So um, Manjula, I'm gonna come back to you to, to, to answer the question on output of waste and just touch base on plastics at the moment. But I'd also wanna to share to both you, Mandla, Mandla Nkosi and Nondemi. So a question from Samantha uh, Charles, who represents uh, paper cycle, uh, recycle paper, rather, ZA, uh, the Paper Recycling Association of South Africa. Have any of you, what is your, your principal business in separation with paper? What are your encounters? Because there has been an entrepreneurship training course hosted. Um, and for us, ultimately, it's bringing in all the different waste streams and seeing how, for example, uh, Nondomiso, Mandla, uh, as well as Loretta have started but expanding to various chains of, of waste collection. And obviously the importance then is how can we enhance the buyback centers to make sure that the, the, the capital is brought in for resources and that your business is grow, um, scaled up. Mandla. Thanks, Angela. Um, like I said uh, from the beginning, everything is in the mindset. It's in the mind and the attitude. With the right attitude, we get the right people. Um, the, the, if I can tell you from, from March, we started in March in the Eastern Cape, in Ituja, one city. We managed to divert over 40 tons of waste. And um, the diverting that, that could have gone most, uh, uh, to be quite honest with you, the people there, they ban the stuff or they fill up the, 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 this, this big dongers that are caused by soil erosion. So I'm, I'm teaching them in partnership with the municipality. So what I came with down there is the knowledge that I collected, the trainings I've attended from PEPCO, as you're touching on the trainings, are very much important. We are still calling for more trainings. They must call us so that we call more people uh, to come in for, for training. The people that we are empowering in the system, the waste pickers that we introduced on a daily basis into the waste collection system, need training, need to cap be capacitated. So we, 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 we need people like the, the person who asking the question, how, how, how can we improve? How can, how can we attend these kind of trainings? We need those trainings to be more capacitated. The more people are trained, the more productive we become. So we've attended paper trainings, the pumps are on the different types of papers, different types of plastics, those are very, very, and the consequences of failure to recycle, what are the negative uh, consequences of, of, of not being able to recycle? From a small community to the province, to the national and to global, you know, what I'm trying to say is that it starts all with the mindset of one person. We need all my duty as Umadli goes. It's just to coordinate. I coordinate with the municipality, coordinate with Angela, I coordinate with all the methods that you have put us through, Angela. I know we're going to get a breakthrough. That's why we're having a challenge there of shipping the stuff because there are no factories. But now I know there will be many people that will be coming down there to assist us. Let's get the stuff to Houghton. Let's get the stuff to, to, to Jebel where it can be recycled. 
that's but now I'll that. stop you there. Thank you for that because we've actually read, led into the next question by Theo Heinecker. Is ultimately so we've got all these no these nodes in South Africa, the buyback centers, recycle centers, driving into community. But one of the biggest challenges as a South African across the board is how we transport. Okay, so so Theo's question is the biggest challenge around here in uh, the Northern Cape in Prisca is the transportation of baled materials to both uh, Gauteng province and Cape Town. Now, ultimately, a lot of companies, and you, you've mentioned the hotel industry, are looking at where we can, can converge waste, that they're pilot sites of inclusivity, they're connecting all the nodes, right? And then definitely, Sally and Kasna, thank you. The, the, um, ultimately, additional materials like glass, for example. I know the different glass work experts in various areas, but the capacitation, I think, of, of uh, different streams of waste on mass so that more people in power uh, can be empowered and through training is exactly what we need um we are heading into almost the closing of the hour i'm going to check out questions and answers and really just share information with regard to our zero waste cities challenge that i know that a lot of members who have um, joined the membership for the circular economy network that's wasted circular economy network and so forth we hope to engage and strengthen other networks like the african circular economy network through collaboration but i'd like to on a closing note mandla and nondumi so just ask you both ultimately when it comes to to looking at the future of um, waste collection, responsible waste collection, and, and the buy-in from every single citizen, whether it be the capacity of business in its training projects through, through instilling the extended producer responsibility program at a grassroots level. From the grassroots, I think ultimately, how do we get further buy-in community in a closing note? How do you envision the future? Nondemi, so you could perhaps start a Monday then on a closing note as well, thank you. Hi. Um, so we as a business and I as a person personally am more close to the food waste problem, uh, mainly because in my community, there are a lot of reclaimers and people who actually collect um, the, the other types of waste, which Abut um, Mantle and Gosi, um, Gosi has uh, mentioned. So my vision is that we get to finish the cycle of waste, especially when it comes to food waste, because it is actually the worst in terms of um, producing methane in the landfill. And it has um, a great impact in terms of, especially in townships, there are rodents there and they actually um, increase um, and they increase and spread um, diseases, which sometimes one wouldn't necessarily know, especially when they come, uh, if they are not so literate in that uh, sense, they wouldn't be able to connect the dot that this waste makes. So for me, it's actually completing the waste cycle, L learning, as I said before, to penetrate and find out how can I get my people to actually say, I can give you my waste, in exchange for this and I having plenty of that through a third person which could be a corporate of course and they will be getting probably the points that they need for um, tax and saying okay now we are finishing this cycle of waste and we are getting a we are actually enhancing our soil quality and we are able to get produce out of that looking at it it is actually something that is it is a closed loop you take something from the soil, you cook, you do whatever, and then you take it back. Um, it's processed by either s worms or black soldier flies, or even through heat composting. And then it goes back into the soil and we have richer soil, which essentially eventually helps with um, water at the end of the day. But yeah, that's what I will say. Thank you, Nondumi. So Mandela, as I, as I hand over to you, I know that uh, you started with plastics and I think we need to be definitely will, as the Waste and Circular Economy Network, have further discussions with regard to understanding plastic separation, identifying and what may be the colloquial um, uh, terms and association with plastic is. But on a closing note, Mandlen Kozi, what would you like to say? I would like to say thank you, thank you very much, Angela and Waste Aid, for having us. This conversation mustn't end, mustn't stop. We need more of this nature to discuss, especially on our radio um, and our mid social media to pass the message to the communities. 99% of the stuff, I, I wouldn't call it junk, but 
the stuff that you hear on radio are not doing anything to do with environment and safeguarding. They're just business and selling ideas and say selling more stuff that is junk that will go to the streets again. What I want to ask is that let, let's have more talks on radio and TV. Let's find a way to talk because people, they listen to radio. People, they listen to, they watch TV. Let's try and put environmental content. This topic will create, they say, waste on its own, waste management can unlock about 9 billion rents that works away, that goes away with waste. So we can unlock that. As Usi Smedu is saying, look at the sector she's coming up, which means we can do this zero recycling. There could be zero waste in South Africa or globally. If we recycle everything and bring more the whistle, the, the food you're talking about is not the whistle. I throw away, and uh, if you were next to me, I'll give it to you because there's plenty of the food that come across. And that you have. But what I'm trying to say, the last point, uh, uh, Sis Angela, is that the sponsors, the companies, don't give cash to cooperatives. It's my, I, I, most of cooperatives fight with me. Please don't give cash, give resources. Once you give cash, you are killing them. The government, I can make many examples here in the ruling. There are plenty of women cooperatives that they come, but the government comes with the staff and with the aim to assist the cooperative to grow. But the cooperative, takes that money as a salary. Once there is no more budget for that, that, that stipend, they sit down, they don't continue. Instead of taking that money and give resources, give daily machine, give trailers, give transport, provide resources that we are unable to provide. Don't give cash to waste pickers. Don't give cash to a government. Consult with the people that have been there in the industry. Don't go overseas and buy stuff for us that we it's going to come here and at the end of the day it's no use please consult with us let's talk help us angela i think you've got a good attitude i love it wait eight i'm being west eight. thank you very uh, much thank you. Mandla, thank you Mandla, to that. Mandla, of course, <laughs> um said positive words and i think ultimately we definitely going to um, have a look at further discussions and solutions that we can provide uh, for example sally and has also said would be being connected to a moneyless application on a cell phone, be able to assist and connect you directly to the market. And we're definitely looking at fantastic companies that are integrating data economy um, to value systems and regulating so that hopefully we can connect all these nodes. Right, I, there are so many questions that we haven't um, answered as yet. And I love the fact that there's a thriving market and interest in unpacking so that we can find solutions collectively and through networks. So I'd like to say that we will definitely follow up and make sure that every single uh, question is answered with, through our panelists and through the information sense, um, information and, and knowledge centers that we at Waste State uh, Circular Economy Network have induced to embark on and share. We're looking at future training projects. We definitely are going to be seeing how we can collaborate with your extended producer responsibility agencies. And thank you to every single one um, who has, as a South African in every representation, come on board, not only to listen, but to participate and share the knowledge. Before I hand over to Tabo um, from Waste Day to just give us a, a recollection of the poll, I'd like to also say that I will reconnect with Loretta, bring her story and encourage you to be a member because through this membership, it's the conversations, it's the understanding of how businesses can help each other, how we can connect communities that really enlarge our territory and help us find responsible, impressive solutions to not only our, our waste system, but truly to advancing, I would say, community uh, innovation inclusivity and a brighter future for us all. Because when we look at re-looking at our waste, rethinking, redesigning, and keeping away from landfall, ultimately we're doing this together for the future, the eminent future for all of us to thrive, to create, and of course to grow and to make lots of money from the new resource and capital. So um, the Zero Waste Cities Challenge, please do check it out. If you think you're a business and you've been maybe not confident, confident enough that you, you fill in the idea of what we're talking about when we talk of a circular economy, go through the processes, 
the entries for the competition in each hub close on the 19th of June. So starting the, this next Monday, it's about three weeks, enough time to get your business development in. If you're not sure about your, your, your proposal, your business work, definitely know that through business development, we are going to be incubating um, the further business development of all, not only the members that have entered the Zero Waste Cities Challenge, but ultimately through membership, um, we can grow the network and have these important conversations and then propose and bring in both upstream and downstream into the conversation. So just a quick one for all the um, information, I'm gonna lead you to one direct link, check out circular economy network.co, that's .co. Danya and ZA to Vietnam and India doing amazing work. Um, and to the Waste Day team, thank you so much. Mandin Kozi and Kozi Nundumi. So, Tabo, I'm going to quickly hand over to you for a closing note. And of course, uh, a recollection on what we have on the poll results. Right. Thank you so much, Angela and uh, the panelists and everyone who's attended the webinar. Thank you so much for your contributions. Uh, um, I need to switch on this video, apologies. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, the amount of information that was shared this morning. And I think uh, most of us can agree that this is just the beginning. And I like what uh, Dr. Manjil Ngozi said, that it's the beginning of a conversation that we need to sustain and we need to build a movement, not just within Gauteng, but take it across the seven provinces in the country. And I think as West Aid, we are highly committed to doing that. And I must appreciate the work that Angela has done, the groundwork, making sure that we're able to move this circular economy network project to the next phase. Just in terms of the poll results, 78% circular economy and family concept to you, 78% they say yes, they know about the three key pillars of the circular economy. And then 22%, they don't understand how it's different to recycling and 0% um, are basically, I have not heard about it before. So I think that's really encouraging to see that, you know, the concept of circular economy is beginning to filter through. And, um, you, you know, and then of course, there are those that are still um, not understanding fully what's the difference between recycling and circular economy. And that's, I think, one of the things we can take for just to make sure that we inculcate the understanding of what is circular economy, what is the benefit, um, you know, to an aspiring entrepreneur, but also to producers and as well as to the communities at large. And that's what we as West Aid aim to do over the next 12 months. Um, just before we bid you goodbye, I just want to bring you to the attention that we are planning a webinar for some time, end of June, early July, which will focus on the implementation of EPR uh, uh, legislation in South Africa. And I've seen a couple of questions that relate to that. And I think it's, 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 quite, um, it's quite good that we should probably have that webinar. We're already talking to uh, our sponsor, Yumataki, and in principle, uh, yesterday they informed us that they are quite keen to be part of that. And we're also looking at bringing in um, uh, Joanna Speck, uh, Chamber of Commerce in the Industry, and they are members, which is big business, to be part of that webinar, as well as everybody else, to really see how um, uh, the different parties are able to play a role in implementing and what type of support is required to take that forward. From our side, West Aid, really a heartfelt gratitude. Thank you so much for joining in. And uh, please do continue to speak to us and share your views on how best we can add value to what you're doing. Thank you. Have a wonderful uh, uh, afternoon. I'm not sure if it's the morning, afternoon, it's 12 o'clock already. Afternoon and uh, God bless you. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you to everybody and we'll reconnect on, on the network. Goodbye. Bye -bye.